Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. Guys, this is Nitin here and I have come up with another amazing problem. It is based on application of uh, impulse and angular impulses. Uh, so guys, this video is brought to you by Indian School of Physics and Unacademy together and uh, the name of this problem is Impulse of Rods. My current courses on Unacademy are uh, INPHO Foundation and J Advanced 2023. It has started on Feb 9th already and uh, a series of mock tests are uh, starting on uh, uh, for mains 2021 in special classes these are free classes so you can check uh, my profile in profile on unacademy and uh, another advanced course for uh, j2022 on electrostatics is starting tomorrow so you can uh, check these courses and you can uh, try to access my theory courses which are of advanced plus plus levels for boosting your uh, JE preparation, these uh, courses you can find on an academy and uh, to unlock free courses or free test series or problems or lectures, you can use my code Nathan sir, uh, <clears throat> wherever it is asking for some invite code or uh, passcode, you can use this and for more information you can visit www.unacademy.com and guys trust me physics will never be the same again. Uh, so here is a statement of uh, this problem. A rod of mass uh, m length l, it is rod 1, which rotates about the hinge a in horizontal plane with angular velocity of omega naught in anti-clockwise direction. Its another end collides uh, uh, with another identical rod uh, at a distance of l by uh, 4 from the hinge b. Rod 1 rebounds with the angular velocity of omega naught uh, by 2 in opposite sense at the time of collision, the angle theta is pi by 6. So you need to find angular velocity of rod 2 just after collision impulse applied by rod 1 on rod 2 and kinetic energy of rod 2 just after collision and also we can find out impulse acting at the hinge just after collision these kind of questions they can ask. Uh, so here the concept part is the linear impulse we can write as uh, p final minus p initial initial change in linear momentum and similarly angular momentum I can write as uh, j vector j r that is uh, nothing but uh, actually this is going to be r cross j you know, i should have written this as a vector r cross j this is going to be angular impulse actually i was writing the magnitude and then i just uh, put vector sign so i hope uh, you will make this uh, correction here this is going to be uh, r cross j angular impulse part all right so uh, here on rod 2 if you apply these are the forces uh, or impulses acting at the time of uh, collision and for rod 2 what i have done is i'll just uh, draw this uh, diagram here i have taken uh, one impulse and here i have taken another impulse so while solving you will uh, come to know all right so for rod 2 uh, angular impulse uh, will be change in linear uh, change in angular momentum of uh, this rod so initially it was at rest so j into l by 4 that that is going to be i omega which is ml square by 3 times omega and we are writing this equation about b so this is how we are going to get and similarly for rod 1 i can write change in angular momentum of this so <clears throat> i should have written here r cross uh, j uh, so r cross uh, j is equal to l final minus l initial all right so you can see on this rod uh, j cos theta into this perpendicular distance which is going to be uh, or j cos theta is this component and another j sin theta will be this side so j cos theta into l and that should be equal to l final minus l initial i'm assuming in the direction of j it is positive so l final is also positive i omega that omega is given to us minus of minus i omega naught so from here we are going to get the value of uh, this j value if you substitute from the first equation here and if you simplify you are going to get omega as root 3 omega naught 5 4 i'm not explaining the calculation part so this is the angular velocity of uh, rod 2 just after collision similarly if i substitute the value of omega in the expression of j which is uh, 4 ml omega by 3 from here you can uh, see 4 ml omega by 3 so when you substitute here j value i'm going to get ml omega naught by uh, root 3 this is going to be the answer for uh, this part 
and uh, similarly kinetic energy of uh, rod 2 i can write it as half i uh, omega of the rod 2 so half moment of inertia about that axis is ml square by 3 and its omega is uh, omega is square so that will become 3 omega naught square by 16 so 3 and 3 gets cancelled you will be getting k final as ml square omega naught square uh, by 32 this is going to be the third part uh, this is the answer for the third part Similarly, <clears throat> now the tricky part is the hinge reaction calculations. If we uh, see here, the hinge which is acting on uh, rod 2, it is J at L by 4 distance and let's say J to X and uh, J to Y here. Alright, so force is existing but it is not going to provide any impulse because there is no change in linear momentum along the length of the rod. So J to X is going to be 0 directly I can get and uh, in the vertical direction here i can write j minus j2y is equal to change in linear momentum of center of mass i have to use here vcm so initially center of mass is at rest finally it is moving with l by 2 omega so j minus j2y is equal to ml omega by 2 so when i substitute the value of j and uh, omega in this case which we have previously calculated i am going to get this uh, j2y as 5 ml omega naught by 8 root 3 this is going to be the answer for this uh, part if they are asking uh, the impulse acting at the hinge similarly uh, for rod 1 uh, like i have shown you earlier this impulse is some j1 and this is uh, let's say j3 uh, so i can write here and resolve this j into two components perpendicular to rod and along the length of the rod so along the length of the rod total impulse is j plus j1 plus j sin theta and that should be equal to change in linear momentum of center of mass in this direction uh, luckily uh, center of mass doesn't have any velocity in a horizontal direction so j1 plus j sin theta should be zero and we are going to get this uh, j1 value as minus ml omega naught by 2 root 3 because as we know this j so here uh, you can see this is coming in negative negative sign indicates actually j is acting uh, in opposite direction similarly along uh, perpendicular to the length of the rod i can write j cos theta minus j3 is equal to p final minus p initial so that is m times vcm final vcm final is going to be l by 2 and final omega is 2 minus of minus m l times omega naught uh, by 2 uh, when i simplify this i am going to get this uh, j3 as minus ml omega naught by 4 and uh, this is going to be the final answer i hope guys it is clear to you in linear impulses we have to take care of uh, vcm part and in angular impulse we have to see for angular impulses so if this uh, solution is uh, clear to you and you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share this video with others. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. Thanks for watching this video.